How's it going, everybody? All slaves, so we're starting chapter six, all slaves should show full respect for their masters so they will not bring shame on the name of God and his teaching. Now, back then, slaves were basically people in debt or that owed money. So, you know how like um, all the world's a stage today? Well, all the world's a slave too because everybody owes money to somebody. But today they've taken your slave room and just put it on credit and add interest but back then if you were unable to pay your debt you had to go to work for them in other words you had to quit the phone company or tico and you had to go to work directly for the company and uh, you're working for free to work off the debt so that's what slavery is in the bible which is why it's approved of they're not talking about slavery being approved in the bible that took place as our history books describe everything that took place in America pre-Civil War days. All slaves should show full respect to their masters and they will not bring shame upon the name of God and his teaching. If the masters are believers, that is no excuse for being disrespectful. Those slaves should work all the harder because their efforts are helping other believers who are well-loved. False teaching and true riches is the heading here. It says teaching these things, Timothy and encourage everyone to obey them. Some of the people may contradict our teaching, but these are the wholesome teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. These teachings promote a godly life. Anyone who teaches something different is arrogant and lacks understanding. Such a person has an unhealthy desire to quibble over the meaning of words. This stirs up arguments, ending in jealousy, division, slander, and evil suspicions. These people always cause trouble. Their minds are corrupt. They have turned their backs on the truth to them. A show of godliness is just a way to become wealthy. Yet true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. After all, we brought nothing with us when we came into the world. We can't take anything with us when we leave it. So we have enough food and clothing. Let us be content. But people who long to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many foolish and harmful desires that plunge them into ruin and destruction. When you read this in the King James, just for instance, we can peruse through it a little bit. Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren. See, that made a whole lot more sense in the um, King James right there. But rather do them service because... They are faithful, beloved partakers of the benefit these things teach and exhort. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to the wholesome words, even to the words of our Lord Jesus and to the doctrine, which according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but dotting about questions and strifes of the words, whereof cometh envy, strife, rallying, evil, surmisings, comma, capital, perverse, Disputings of men of corrupt minds, destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself. So that was said good in the new living. Um, easier to understand. <clears throat> I just wanted to check it out. Anyway, let's move on to Daniel, please. Daniel chapter nine. This is Daniel's lamenting. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so you will hear him cry out, O oh Lord. O oh Lord. To the Lord of our God. The voice of the Lord our God. All Israel has transgressed thy law. And let me see here. In the law of Moses, the servant of God. And when this began, if I can just go back. 
to where he began, I prayed unto the Lord my God. And he's saying here, oh Lord. Okay. Oh Lord, the great and dreadful God. And so that's how it began yesterday. Today was six. And it's six. All right, neither have we hearkened unto thy servants, the prophets, which spake in thy name to our kings, our princes, our fathers, to all the people of the land. See, the, the prophets, the best way I can describe the prophets back then are like basically what you get out of this Bible study today. And you're like, you're, he's saying he's a prophet. No. But the best you can compare, because the prophets hearkened unto Israel, God's chosen people. And Israel did not listen. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, that killeth the prophets. They would kill these prophets. There's people today that are very angry when they see what I do on Facebook. They see, you know, or, or yeah. They're usually not here in the Bible study. So it's basically what they see. They get their heart. gets very angry. Not sheep, perhaps lost sheep. There's people that go to so-called church, just like these people of the nation of Israel. Yet many of them died as goats. Not all of Israel were sheep. The bloodline Jesus came through, the parents of the parents and the grandparents and so forth, I would tell you they were all sheep. And they go through that bloodline in Matthew. Matthew chapter 1, King James Version, Bible Gateway. So when you go through, and Aram begot Anadab, and Adadam begot Nasun. Nasun begot Simon. Simon begot Boz. Boz begot, and he goes all the way through. All the way through these names. So are the generations of Abraham to David, our 14 generations from David until carrying away to Babylon and four generations now the birth of Jesus. And, you know, Jacob begot Joseph, the husband of Mary. That's the last one. Um, so when you go through these, I would tell you that these people were all sheep and all of the prophets were sheep. They suffered, they died, they were killed, or they were not listened to, um, the people of Israel or Jerusalem during the Old Testament days, hated them, and of course, killed some of them. And Eli it was Elijah or Elias. Um, I have 7,000 that have not bowed their knees to Baal. So that's in 1 King, 1 Kings 19. First Kings 19, King James Version, Bible Gateway. It was Elijah. Elijah thought he was the only one that was in truth <laughs> on the earth. And um, he was very upset. And um, he says... Let me see if I can find it for you. And after the earthquake and fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in the mantle and went out and stood in the evening, excuse me, stood in the entering of the cave. 
And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, what doest thou here, Elijah? <laughs> what, what are you here to whine or cry about now? And Elijah said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left and seek my life to take it and, and they seek my life to take it away so bad times right and the lord said unto him go return thy way to the wilderness of damascus and when thou comest, so go back where you came from anoint hazel to be king over syria and Janu, the son of uh, Nimshi, shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elijah, the son of Saphat, and Abelallah, don't know, shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. And it shall come to pass that him that escapeth the sword of Hazel shall Jehu slay, and him that escapeth from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Yet I have left me seven thousand. God's saying, I've got seven thousand here, pal. <laughs> that wouldn't highlight. There it goes. All the knees which have not bowed to Baal, Baal, and every mouth which has not kissed him. He's saying, You're not the only one. I got others. I got seven thousand that haven't um, been handed over to Satan or, 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 you know, worshiped Baal. Bale in the Grove and all the demonic stuff. It's like people that do Christmas today. There's so many people that claim Jesus, but they drag the Christmas tree in their house. What are they doing? It's the tree goddess. They don't even know what they're doing, but they're doing it. If they take that to their grave, they're goats. It means the Lord never pulled them out of the world. He never called them to the truth. They believe in free will and they celebrate pagan holidays what are you going to do with that they might as well be hindu buddhist catholic islamic or muslim or satanist mystery babylonians atheist a goat is a goat is a goat is a goat no matter what their belief system is all the belief systems of the world that are of paganism or evil or the goat religion, I guess I should say, they are all a free will. Some things you have to do to be saved. Hinduism, Buddhism, they all got things you need to do, steps to take, things to do. So you get the idea. So now Daniel is lamenting because he feels as if he, um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Hananiah, Meshach, and Azariah, excuse me. Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. That's their Jewish names. In Babylon, they were then called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But it's Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah, and Daniel. Those are like the only four that are even spoken of during these times of the book of Daniel that were actually in truth or sheep that we know of at least now there may be many others that have not bowed their knees to to bail bail in the grove same there might be many more but they're just not spoken of that's all so but basically since they were always wrong in doing this the lord threw them into captivity which is what daniel's about and now so daniel 
is lamenting to the Lord and he's saying, we are so sorry. You know, we represent you. Forgive us. Increase our faith. Bring us back. So let's continue on. Oh, Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces as at this day to the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and unto all Israel, in other words, your church, O Lord, that are near, that are far off through all the countries, whither thou hast driven them, because due to the captivity, they were driven anywhere and everywhere under Babylon and then the Mede and the Persian empires. They were captive. They were no longer, they no longer had their own country of Israel because they were went into paganism, so they were thrown into captivity, okay? And that far off through all the countries, whither thou hast driven them, because of their trespass, they have trespassed against you, O Lord. O Lord, to us belong confusion of, of face, to our kings, to our princes, and to our fathers, because we have sinned against you, O Lord. To the Lord, our God, belong mercies and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against you, O Lord. Neither have we obeyed the voice of you, our Lord, our God. I am changing the words around a little bit for perspective, kind of like fusing a kind of a new living translation or whatever. Uh, as long as you're teaching the truth, in other words, in context, it doesn't matter if you change a word. I mean, look how many different um, what do you call it? Different books of the Bible. There are different translations, excuse me. You look at all the different translations in Bible Hub, right? It just, um, let's do it. Daniel 9 9 Bible Hub. When you go to Bible Hub and you look at all these different translations, look at them. All different ways, words are changed. So, if I'm paraphrasing the King James, where the King James might say, to the Lord our God belong mercies and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against him. But over here in the English Standard, it might say, to the Lord our God belong mercies and forgiveness, for we have rebelled against him. New living, but to the Lord our God is merciful forgiving, forgiving even though we have rebelled against him. They didn't change it a lot. I changed it like, to, you know, though we have rebelled against you, O Lord, because what Daniel's doing is... He'll go from first person to second person to third person. I just kind of keep it all in the same personage, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, he's saying, he's praying here to, oh, Lord. And over here, he is saying that we have rebelled against him. So I change it to we have rebelled against you, oh, Lord. That's all I'm doing. So to the Lord, our, our God, belong mercies and forgiveness though we have rebelled against you, our Lord. Neither have we obeyed the voice of our Lord, our God, or neither have we obeyed you, O Lord, to walk in your laws, which you set before us as your servants, the prophets. Yea, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us righteously, right? And the oath that is written in the law of Moses of the servant God, because we have sinned against your law, O Lord. And he hath confirmed his words which spake against us and against our judges that judged us by bringing upon us great evil. Well, he threw them into Babylonian captivity which then was taken over by the Medes and the Persians. For under the whole heaven have not been done as have been done upon your church, Jerusalem, O Lord. In other words, he's saying, you have punished us well, uh, a punishment to the point that's never taken place before. You've never embarrassed your church like this before, Lord. That's, that's what's taking place. Love you very much. Ask questions anytime. That's what I'm here for. Thank you.